today's episode, we're taking a break from the truck, waiting on parts. I'm going to give you guys the rundown on the last project that I worked on, the low vet. This car was a big project between my dad and I, so I'm going to give you guys kind of the tour of the car. Then we're going to hop in it, drive back to the garage, and I'm going to jack it up so that you guys can see how the air ride and exactly how it works. What do you say we check this out? I'm White Wall Steve, this is the Good Enough Garage, and this is the low vet episode. Okay guys, so here's the low vet. The paint on this car is a custom mixed color. I was working at a body shop supply store, paint store, and we were dealing in matrix paint. This is the color I came up with. I wanted something that would pop in the sunlight, but under non-direct light, it would be just basically yellow. The car's always been yellow. It started life sunflower yellow but now it's this yellow pearl that I have no name for. Leave a comment, tell me what you think I should call this color. I got nothing, it's just a yellow pearl. The wheels, Colorado Custom, Leadville, and the brake calipers are stock calipers, shaved. All the markings are shaved and they're painted another custom color that I came up with, a gunmetal gray, and that's kind of throughout the car as an accent color to go with the yellow. The side pipes are hooker headers from Corvette Central. Body work wise on this car, shaved the Stingray badges. We shaved the door lock cylinders. The door locks are power now. And the key for the back, which would have been for a burglar alarm, is what they were originally for, that's shaved as well. The tail lights on this car are from United Pacific. They're all LED. And everything else around the car on the outside is pretty much stock. Uh, we didn't fit flare the fenders or anything. It just looks that way because of, you know, how it's dropped. So what do you say we pop the hood and I'll show you guys underneath the hood. The hood is actually a 69 427 big block hood. The engine is the original block. 202160 steel heads on it. And to give it a little bit of oomph, and it's got an LT1 intake that was fully polished by Glenn Gibbons in Romulus, Michigan. A CPP master cylinder. This brake booster cover is really cool. Underneath this is the original brake booster, original style brake booster. And we made this cake pan cover out of stainless steel to go over top of it. The, the pulley system is actually a Zoops pulley system but they're not in business anymore, so I can't really give them a shout out. The electric fan is a cooling components fan that we painted the shroud and chrome plated the bars. Superior radiator, radiator. We got rid of all the AC stuff that would have been right in through here, shaved it, painted the firewall and the engine bay to match the car, and then we got vintage air in the car. Big shout out to my mom for doing those pretty cool covers that say Corvette on them for the wheel well openings. Electric headlight motors. Those are late, bo late model Firebird motors. Slightly modified the brackets and made them fit the original mechanism. So I'll show you guys what those look like. A one piece target top we had made up. This is actually an Astro Tops plexiglass top that we painted and put a headliner in. Gives it that one piece look. Gets rid of that line in the center. Smooths it out a lot. On the interior, first thing you're gonna notice is C5 Corvette seats. Six way power, lumbar, everything works. The steering wheel is a billet specialty stiletto. We also have some Dakota digital gauges. Now all my gauges are right here. We got in this one, we got speedometer, fuel, and volts. And in this one over here, we got tack, temp, water temp, and oil pressure. Everything's right there because you'll see where the gauges would have been. We now have a L LCD screen. That's pretty much my radio, CD player. Everything works through that. We remade the vents 
to be round to match the outside ones. That's my air ride controller. When you turn the car on, shows you all the readings of each bag plus the tank pressure. And then these switches control each bag individually. And these three down here control all four bags. Auto leveling works great. The center console has been custom made. We added some cup holders. The shifter is actually a Genie shifter because this is not a manual. It's an automatic with a 700R4. Vintage air controllers, rear defroster switch. Power window switches are actually out of a Ford Taurus. And then, and then we added an iPod dock. A little outdated at this point, but we have tons of iPods, tons of music. Works great. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'd much rather do that than a streaming service. And then of course, an auxiliary input. Center console opens up and you got a little storage there. Added some speaker grills in the doors, along with a nice handle integrated. I wanted it to kind of have that bathtub ring look. So the top of the dash is painted and then we got that nice gunmetal gray to go with it. Then it go, goes right into the top of the door panel and then around in the back and it goes all the way around. Brings a lot of nice color into the interior. That's pretty much the interior. Oh yeah, and the engine is a 355. So it's been bored over. You know, we did a little bit, put a cam in it, but that's about it. So what do you say we hop in this thing, you guys come along with me, and then I'll show you guys all about the air ride suspension underneath it. Because that's kind of the big focal point of the car, and that's what makes this car really a one-of-a-kind Corvette. So let's take it home and we'll show you all about that. All right guys, let's roll. if you ever wanted to bag your c3 corvette or you had a friend that wanted to bag their c3 corvette you could show them this video and get a pretty good understanding on how to do it so let's get this thing jacked up i'll show you all about it all 
Okay guys, I got the wheel all off. First thing you're gonna notice is that shock. Since there's an airbag in the spring pocket now and we're not running a shockwave style bag, if you don't know what that is, it's where the shock and the bag are integrated, you have to run a shock somewhere else. So we had to run the shock on the back side of the control arm setup. Was we made this bracket that welds behind the upper control arm to the frame here and then bolts to the to the top of the lower control arm to the rear. The bag is right there. Now, if you could tell, we had to open up that spring pocket quite a bit in order to make room for that bag. So you don't want that bag rubbing on anything. And then we had to make bag cups for the bag to sit in. There's one up here at the top of the spring pocket and one down here. So that bag sits in there nice and firmly doesn't move it's got a bolt at the top where the shock the original shock would have bolted and then it bolts in the bottom where the shock would have bolted on the bottom and then I have this leader hose here that is how the front is bagged okay now on the rear I don't really have to jack it up I could just get up under here and show you guys so on the rear it's just a single bellow bag and this is all airlift stuff, if you guys were wondering. And then these lower control arms here were all custom made. They got eyelets on either side, and then the bag bolts to that, and then the bag has a bag cup welded to the upper cross member, if you can see it there. And then this centering plate is just something to make it aesthetically pleasing. So when you look up under here, you see it really nice, and I painted it that gunmetal gray color. And then it's got a link set up here to put it to the trailing arm. And then I have adjustable strut rods, and then the shock is in the stock location. I have two three-gallon tanks. All of my air ride controls, and then the tanks are tied together by this braided hose. So that is the air ride system. And you guys can see it go up and down here. Makes the car a one-of-a-kind, really. So that's the air ride and everything that entails with that. So if you guys do want to put air ride on your C3 Corvette, you can use this video. You can copy anything I did. I don't care. I just want you guys to have what I didn't have. And that's a good reference point for doing air ride on a C3 Corvette because I just didn't have that when I did this back in 2008. Give you guys a quick little history about the Lovet. My dad bought it brand new in 1973. Well, kind of new. He bought it as a demo in 1973, so he's the only owner of the car. He drove it until about 76, 77, when it was attempted to be stolen out of the Cadillac Clark Street plant in Detroit. It was at that time he said, it's done, I'll get a daily, and I'll drive this on the weekends. In 1979, he decided he's going to fully restore it, give it a fresh paint job, frame off, paint the frame, new engine, everything. Rebuilt the engine, and he added things here and there up until about 1994 when he took it off the road a second time, but it wasn't going to be back on the road very soon. He decided to raise a family and build the house do everything, remodel the kitchen, remodel the, the family room, do a lot of other house things and family things that didn't really involve the Corvette. In 2007, 2008, it was my turn. I wanted to get something done on this car. I wanted to have a cool Corvette. So I decided I'm going to start working on this thing. And with a lot of help from my dad and some amazing people, you guys know who you are if you did help on this project. I cannot thank you enough. Um, it became the car that it is today. Um, we had some great sponsors, Matrix Automotive Finishes, Cruiser's Candy Shop, Zoops, um, Airlift, and a lot of other small companies like PMA and my buddy Anthony Alfonsi who helped do all the fiberglassing on the interior. And of course, Scott Tangi who without him the car would not look nearly as good as it does today because he did all the paint work and it turned out magnificently. My friend Aaron who helped me get this thing with little odds and ends things here and there and helped me get it shining with wet sanding and rubbing it 
and a lot of other friends who helped get things squared away, airlift and um, uh, airedup.com and a lot of other people. So if I didn't mention you, you guys know who you are and you guys has, have helped tremendously in getting this car where it is. And we debuted this car in 2012 at the Detroit Autorama and took first place. We've been on the cover of Vet Magazine and a few other smaller magazines like Vet Views and the car's taken countless top awards at almost every show we've been to. So it's, as you can say, as you can probably guess, my dad's pretty happy with the outcome of the car. So that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out the Low Vet and everything that's entailed in it. And be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And hopefully in the next episode we can get back on the White Wall special and get that rolling. So I'm White Wall Steve. Thanks for tuning in to the Good Enough Garage.